Hello everyone and you're welcome. Now this is going to be a quick tutorial on how you could quickly jumpstart and get started with git and then how you could you know write simple git commands to push your project into github. Now uh, some of my very good friends they've usually asked me about git and github and you're so confused and don't really understand what it's all about. So I understand this in fact when I was starting out I actually got confused a lot about Git and GitHub because I don't know, even from the words and all that. So quickly put, I'll just uh, just begin this. So the way I see Git is that you have a uh, piece of software program that helps you manage your files, you know, your documents, your scripts, you know, it could be anything, it could even be video files. Now it reports and it catalogs and stores a snapshot of activities and basically whatever you do isn't really um, hidden it actually knows your steps and your actions it knows when you did it it also knows how you did it so basically git is a virtual manager that's very good at its job and it reports your projects or tasks with cutting edge you know software data for managing it basically that's what git is Think about this you have some excellent manager a virtual manager in your system if you install git he's there for you like the git guy is gonna get you good and he's actually there for you so that's what git is in other terms it's called a version control system but i like to use my own terms the way i understand the software on the other hand github you know the way i see it as well is a web hosted platform and it works very well with version control software now there are a lot of version control software and basically if you if the keyword here is version it means you have a version of a document file software or video whatever it is that has moved on to another version there's a difference between the first version and the second version and you actually have a version manager that can give you reports and tell you this is what has changed and this is your status this is when you are and it can tell you the dates these things have changed now github the way the word here hub is the takeaway basically it's a project based collaborative integration where an individual or a team can actually work on a complete project separately and then it does what git does but this time around it does it on the web so you can actually see those changes live on the web and github lets you see all of that you know basically that's how it works so if you're actually working on a github account you notice you actually be online on the web collaborating you know branching and working with other people or you can walk individually and you can send your web link to employees to your colleagues they could come up they could download they could do all that stuff now some of those things can be done with git but it's not really on the web as much as it is so it's all also i see git and github like members of the same family right they all have their unique characteristics but at the end of the day they are all this big circle that is why you notice that uh, a lot of people like to use git with github basically you could have git that sits locally on your system that manages your changes and then when you're done and you're ready to push that to a web platform for your colleagues or whoever it is to see you actually switch over to github so let's go ahead and jump right here and I'll just close this and jump into the pages as well so this is the github uh, page you can actually sign up and create an account I'll just sign into my account and I'll just click sign in and I'm actually in github and I'm good to go right so this is how it is we can create a repository which is a folder or a file that exists on the github server where you could actually push your git projects to that server so that's how it works so over here this is the git uh, website and you can actually download git i'm on your windows system you can click on downloads it will download you can right click and install follow the instructions so how do we use git right so now that we actually uh, explain that how do we use git how do we use this thing so uh let me go ahead and open my command line 
So to open up my command line, I just do a Windows key and R, or you can search for command prompt and just type CMD and press the return key. Now, if I go ahead and just drag this, I have a, a folder that contains some documents for a project. If I open this folder, I actually have a subfolder called code and I have two code files in here. These are both Python files, but like I said, it could actually be anything. It could be anything. It could be a video file. It could be you know, MP3 files. It could be audio files. It could be text files. It could be anything. It just happens that I have two Python files in here. Now, note since github is web-based and you're uploading content to a server and you have a free account you have a limitation i think it's about two gig i'm not sure but i think you have about two gig once it's over two gig you have to actually pay for more space so just keep that in mind if you're uploading videos to uh, github so i have this folder so how do i initialize or create this folder and you know make this folder uh, accessible on github so the first thing to do we'll actually use our command line to move to this directory. So I'm going to do a CD, which means change directory. And I'm going to go to my desktop and I'll use a slash Python programming. So that's the folder on my get, uh, desktop right now. So now I'm in that folder. Once you've installed Git, right? So I'm just go ahead and maximize this once you've installed git you can actually check to see which git version you actually uh, use so to do that i'm going to say git and i'll do a version it's going to tell me this is git version 2.37.1.windows.1 you can even do a git dash v or you can do a git double dash version like so all this is going to work for uh, with uh, actual uh, Git. So now that we in that Python programming folder, what we're going to do is to configure our global username and our global email. Because if you actually look at your GitHub, if especially when you're doing this for the first time, you'd actually have a you know, username, that's my username, and the email I use to create my Git account. If this is the first time you're doing it, it's actually good to actually set that up. So I'll just actually quickly show you how you can uh, set that up using the git configure command, right? So we're gonna say uh, git config dash dash global. Global simply means this is gonna be used anytime you create another uh, grit, git repository, which is actually a project. So, uh, so we say global and I'll say user, oops. User dash name. I'm going to type my username, Mahmoud slash Fifi, like so, and press the return key. And say it doesn't contain a section called user dash name. I think it's user dot name. Sorry about that. So I'll just press up. And right here where I have user dash name, I'm going to say user dot name. Really sorry about that, guys. And I'll say Mahmoud dash Fifi. And good, so that's a good command and that's done. Let's go ahead and set our config for our email. So I'm gonna say git config dash dash global. So I'm gonna say user and remember my dot email and I'll just type in my email here. And my email is mood schwab five five at oops at gmail.com like so so that's i've actually configured this now uh, each time i run a git uh, project right now i don't actually need to do this because i've already configured that uh, globally so first thing we're going to do to create that is to use the init keyword to initialize our file so i'm just going to say init and this is going to in initialize an empty git repository basically it just means you're preparing this document to actually start using some git commands and to do that let's go ahead and use another command to check the status of our project so let's say git status like so so it actually tells me that uh, we have a few untracked files and we haven't committed this yet to commit means to actually you know uh, add stuff 
So nothing is added to this git and it's giving giving us something. It's telling us that we can use git add to actually track this file right here that is called code. All right, so let's go ahead and do that. So now that I've done that, let's go ahead and git uh, add. So here, uh, we actually have this here in this code file. So let's go ahead and jump to our code folder. Let's do CD code like so. All right. So let's see, uh, get status as well. So it says like this is on track and all that. So uh, let's go ahead and actually do that. So let's add everything. So I'll just say git add so we can use a uh, dash dash all so we are actually adding everything like so so let's check our status again using git status aha now we're getting somewhere it's actually telling us that uh, it hasn't committed anything yet but it's actually seen two new files our hello.py and our variables and data types dot py file so basically, uh, GitHub has now recognized that I have these two files, but it actually hasn't done anything to these files yet. I'll have to actually tell it to actually do that. So let's go ahead and commit all these two files. So to do a commit, we're going to just say uh, git commit. And if we want to commit all of them, we'll just say dash a m and then we'll pass in the message actually the readme message that we want to save in this commit and basically i'm just say uh saving my two python files like so to edited or let's just leave it as saving my two python files and press the return key Good, so we're actually getting an error here. It's a fatal paths with dash A does not make sense. So I think I must have made a typo like here. So it's supposed to be a dash A that M. Really sorry about that, guys. So I need another uh, dash M here. So I'll just go back here, dash M. And let's just see, saving my two files with new lessons all right good so it actually tells us now here we can actually we're getting somewhere it says two files changed 248 insertions and we have our create mode and it's telling us these two files have actually been created and saved and we can quickly run a git status over here and we actually haven't committed this as well. So even though we actually have add, uh, used the uh, commit, we actually have, haven't uh, pushed this. Uh, so we're actually seeing this uh, right here. Now, if we actually want to see more information, we could actually do a log using git log. And this should actually show us where our uh, kind of like major uh, branch is, which is master and actually see the information we have here. We see we're see saving my two files with uh, lessons. So this is actually showing us that commit and this is actually a git hash, which actually, uh, and it actually tells us the date and the time we made that commit. So like I explained what git, you know, does, it's like you have this excellent manager on your project within your local files. So how do we actually push this files right here to GitHub because we're actually working on our local machines right here. So how do we push this to GitHub, right? Because we're actually on Git. Well, the way to do that is to actually get our repository. So let me just go ahead and minimize this and open up the browser and jump over here. If I go to cre uh, cre uh, recent repositories, these are my most recent repositories. I'll just click show more. And I have one here called Py, uh, Py4B, which is actually the repository I created for this uh, file. So we can actually go to code and actually see the path right here. To create a repository, you could just click this uh, plus icon here 
and say new repository and you should actually have that repository created where you could give it a name in fact let's just go ahead and do that since we're here so i'll say new repository i'll just call it uh python 4 b so that's it so i'll just say uh i'll add a description i'll say my python for beginners course and uh, I'll make that public and I'll add a readme which is actually going to tell anyone who opens this file what's happening in that file for the license I'll set it to uh, Creative Commons or uh, I'll just use GNU and I'll create this repository so once I create this repository I'm on github right now it means I'm now going to move from move the files from git and git is going to be interacting with github from henceforth each time I push something from git it's actually going to come to this web-based collaborative environment where I could actually have anyone in the world who wants to add to my project I'm going to actually see a new branch which I can actually add to my main branch and you know kind of like accept it so let's go ahead and click on code and I'll just copy this right here so if I copy this this is the URL path I would like to add to my um, GitHub. So let's go ahead and get over here. So right here where I have the code, I'm going to actually add this. So I'll just say use the command git remote and I'll say add origin and I'll just paste in that URL like so. So now that I've done that, I actually need to push this. So I'm just going to say git push origin main. Uh, I think it should be, uh, sorry, git push origin master. And it's actually going to uh, uh, kind of like take a little while. And it says enumerating five objects. And this is done. Writing objects. So we create a pull request for master on GitHub by visiting this guy right here. So a pull request will allow me to pull off that uh, content on GitHub. And I can add that to a new branch called the master. So let's go ahead and check this out. So if right here, if I'm on the web. And we can actually see master had recent pushes less than a minute ago. So compare and pull request. So I'll just go ahead and click on this. And we can actually see our uh, information here. And this is the content of that Python file. I actually have two of these files. So this is the first file and this is the second file. And it actually sees it says there's nothing to compare because I'm actually want to change this with the main, which is the default one. And we actually have master like so. So it says there's nothing to compare, which is actually great. So if you actually click on the pull request, we can actually add more pull requests. And it's actually telling us we can actually uh, collaborate on code with other people and create a pull request. Basically, if I pull this, I can pull and then push it to my main file because we click over here you actually see this one right here which is the base root one so we actually compare this to master and we can kind of like send it to main so if you're actually okay with that you can stop here but we can actually add more commands say for instance to you know add our uh, request to the uh, main commit we can actually say a uh, git remote add origin and we will actually paste this address like so and it tells us it already exists so we can actually do our push so we can say a uh, git push origin master like so so it actually tells us that uh, a cool request for uh, we can actually do that pull request right here 
and we can actually went woo to git this actual remote already exists and everything is up to date so we can do a git pull origin main and we can actually okay it says it actually we have an error right here that says it's refused to merge unrelated uh, histories. So once we pull, we can now re-push. So that's how it works. So hopefully this has given you an idea of how you can actually work with Git and some of those basic uh, Git commands you can actually work with. And hopefully this will give you an idea. Now a very cool thing that can happen is, uh, let me go ahead and start, oops start another command line right here and uh, let's switch this over to uh, in fact we can even leave it uh, here in case you actually don't know what a, a git command does you can actually do a git help and just actually list all the commands with some simple explanation of what uh, actually it does so there are lots of these commands and you can actually see clone clone a repository into a new directory and we actually used init, we used add, and we used a log and status, and we actually used the commit. So we actually also used the pull, and we actually used the push as well. So you can even do a single, you know, uh, help on a specific, you know, um, git command. For instance, I can do git help commit. So let's just say git help commit and this is actually going to open up a web page that tells us and you know gives us an example of you know what the commit does and basically record changes to the repository that's what commit does you can still go to your command line again and then type in and find a help on the git branch so i could just do a git help branch and just press the return key and this should give me information on the uh, git help branch so list create or delete existing branches and it's actually showing us some of these examples we can even read up on a description so uh, hopefully this actually has shed more light on how you can use git and also you can actually uh, check out some uh, very cool uh, resources we have a free book there's a free book on the git site you can actually check out that book as well and i believe it has some videos on git there's some free videos i could swear there are some videos we could watch let's see slash videos i think i've, I've seen that yeah scm slash videos very good so there are actually some nice videos under the documentation you can click on videos and you can actually read up on these the best way to learn git is to actually practice by creating a folder creating your github account you know and just actually trying to push the content of your folder into the uh like a github account and just see you know what happens when you actually uh, do that so thank you very much for watching guys i hope this was helpful in a way and i hope you understand have a basic idea of what git is just keep practicing keep asking questions Keep making mistakes you can actually say i made a few mistakes while i was trying to like push and commit those files but it's actually awesome thank you very much for watching guys i'll see you in the next lesson